We welcome all of you this morning to our Tri-City Charge Worship Service. This morning we're at Franklin, Solace, St. Matthews are all a part of this charge. We have gathered this morning to welcome everyone who is on Zoom, Facebook Live, and YouTube. We're glad you're with us, and we pray, we pray that you will pray with us as we worship the Lord our Lord. This morning, we are going to recognize the veterans in our midst and on our charge. We thank God that he woke us up this morning. Well, each and every one of us. Let us never, ever take for granted the blessings of the Lord. To count your blessings, name them one by one. The one blessing is, is that God is always with you. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, his Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is with us, dwells with us, guides us, leads us. So join us this morning and worship the one and only God in our hearts, our praise, our worship, our, our very being. He created us. He created all around us. And everything that he's given us, we should be more than happy to give back to him in praise and our worship and to, to show each other that we truly are the children of God. So we welcome you here this morning. We thank God for everything. The devil is busy. He was working with me this morning. My son's car had car trouble. I had to go all the way to Annapolis to take him to work. And he come back to Andy and I told the pastor, I'm going to be late. And he said, well, we're going to sing until you get here. So we're going to praise the Lord until you get here. So we thank you this morning. We thank you for your patience. We have a thank you card. And it's, it says, thank you, Franklin family. And this is the family of Barbara Dean Wilson. Would like to thank you for all of your expressions of encouragement and love during our bereavement. We are truly grateful and extend our love to you all. And this is from the Clochette, Calhoun, the Littleton, and their children. So this is, uh, if you all don't know who Barbara Dean Wilson is, I think you may know about Barbara Dean Brown. So Barbara Dean um, has gone from this world to her reward, and her daughter, Clochette, who you all may know as one of Alice's great friends, and, and still considers herself, even though she's in Philadelphia, part of this church family. So we greet with them, and we thank them with their, their card. This morning, our announcements are as follows. First Lady Wamba will continue her Sunday school lesson immediately following the service on Facebook Live and on Zoom. Zumba will meet Tuesday, November 16th at 7 p.m. Franklin Budget Meeting, Tuesday, this Tuesday, September 16th, at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Chairpersons, please make sure if you have not already to get your budgets in to the Finance Committee. On Wednesday, November 17th at 7 p.m. on Zoom will be our prayer call. Please join us in prayer. The Tri-City Mass Choir will have rehearsal Saturday September, I'm um, um, September, November 20th, 11 a.m. at St. Matthew's. Uh, 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 
It's going to be five? Yeah. Okay. It'll be five at St. Matthew's on Saturday. The Sunday worship service on November 21st will be 10 a.m. at St. Matthew's. And this is their fall rally conclusion. The Just Because We Care 25th anniversary, silver anniversary of this ministry will be Sunday, November the 21st at 4 p.m. at St. Matthew's. First Lady Minister Anita Wombo will give the message and the music will be provided by 95.1. Psalm 95.1. The Franklin Canned Goods Collection. Members can bring canned goods each Tuesday to Franklin from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. or 6 to 7 p.m. Or if you have them, you can bring them back here today. The deadline is Tuesday, November the 23rd. Please contact Sister Patricia Gross or Sister Paula Thompson by November 21st, if you know of anyone in need of a Thanksgiving basket. The Baby Pantry is open Saturday, November the 20th, beginning at 10 a.m. at St. Matthew's. Um, let's see, I don't see this announcement, but I know that our, on the 20th will also be um, Franklin will be here for the pet food pantry. The Tri-City, let's see what else is here. Um, for men only, the prayer meeting and Bible study will take place Tuesday, November the 23rd at 6 p.m. at St. Matthew's. All men of the Tri-City Charge community are invited. And we ask that if you have not signed into the uh, sign-in sheet, please do so and do that every Sunday for us, please. Uh, December 5th will be the fall rally here at Franklin. Um, there have, uh, letters have been prepared and envelopes are ready. Uh, they will be mailed out to you sometime this week. And those of that you are here this morning, if you'll see me after service, I do have those uh, letters ready and the envelopes. So if you're here, I'll be happy to give them to you this morning. The rest we will mail out. Uh, our fall rally uh, will be here December the 5th anyway for um, communion service. And our theme this year is Reaping What You Sow. And it's based on Galatians, the sixth chapter, verses seven through eight. Although we are not worshiping every Sunday in church, we still have a need to fund our ministries, pay the utilities, and meet our obligations to our pastors and to the Baltimore Washington Conference. Unfortunately, we are limited in fundraising. Therefore, we are asking you to support each, each family. We're asking for a donation of $100 or whatever you can give or whatever God has placed on your heart towards our Falls Rally. So please see me after church. If you're here, I'll give you, give out those letters and envelopes to those who are present. At this time, we will have our opening prayer by Pastor Boisaw. Would you join her in prayer as she prays? Thank you. Good morning, Tri-City. Good morning, Tri-City. Good morning. It's just good to be together one more time. Amen. Amen. So it's prayer time yes. in God's house. Yes. 
Those of you who would like to come forward this time, please do so. And as you come forward, God has just kept us through another week. And for that, we're grateful. He brought us here safely this morning, which is another blessing. Yes. And so we can't just take those little things for granted that God does for us every day. Amen. Amen. So God knows what you're standing in the need of. And you can come forward. I'll wait on you. I will wait. God waited on me. Amen. Amen. To come to him. And so we certainly can wait on you to come. To leave your burdens at the altar. Or come to give God praise. Amen. I want to stress that a lot of times we think about coming to the altar because of an issue or a problem or concern. And that's fine. But also come and thank him after he has taken care of that concern or that burden that you had. Let us pray. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Most gracious God, we thank you, Lord, for being together another Sunday, dear Lord, to come and uplift your name just because of who you are. We're grateful, Lord, that we live in a country that we have religious freedom and that we can come together and to learn of you and to give thanks as a body of believers, dear Lord. God, we ask you forgive us of our sins by thought, word, and deed, dear God. We ask that you continue to do spiritual surgery on us, Lord, so that we can be the disciples of Jesus Christ that you have called us to be, dear God. I ask God that you continue to soften our hearts to receive your word and to be obedient to go out and to do your word, dear God. Be obedient to live in a way that's pleasing to you, dear God. We ask that you continue to lead God and direct our pastor, Lord God. Give him the strength and the boldness to stand on your word, to do what you called him to do, According to your word, your will, dear God. Continue to bless our first lady in a mighty way. Protect her, God, as she goes forth to do her job, dear God. It can be a little interesting there, Lord God. So we ask that you just continue to surround her with your love. And God, we ask that you bless every family here and on Zoom today, God. You know what everybody is standing in the need of dear God. So we ask that you will bless. We add that you will supply every need. And then God, we ask that you give us the patience to wait on you because we know you are going to deliver, but it's going to be in your time. So give us the patience. And while we're waiting, give us the heart to praise you through while we're waiting because we know you are going to supply. God, we ask you go to the hospitals, go into the nursing homes, and bless and take care of all of those standing in need. God, bless those who are bereaved, dear Lord. Please be with those families. Comfort them only the way that you can comfort them. Let them be reminded that you do care for them. Your word says that. So all they have to do is to continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand 
and that you will be there with them, Lord. God, open our hearts to receive the word of God from the messenger that you have sent to try city today, dear God, so that we may be able to apply it to our lives. Lord, we love you today and we give you all the glory and honor that you so richly deserve. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Church, say amen. amen. Church, say amen. amen. One more time. Hallelujah. The Lord is blessing us. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Right now. Right now. We don't have to wait for it. Come on. Hallelujah. Our blessing is every time we take a breath. Amen. amen. God is good. Hallelujah. God is great and worthy to be praised. Uh, I give you, uh, welcome everybody who is here uh, one more time for all those who came out and for all of those who are, are jo joining us on Facebook Live and Zoom, uh, those who are members of the Tri-City Charge or wherever you may be. As, as I remind us, we have folks from all across the country who are watching us. We are in the thriving metropolis of Churchton, Maryland this morning. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all are folks in California trying to look and see, where is church in there? <laughs> where is that big city they talking about in there? Uh, but God is good. I want to thank everybody who was a part of our church-wide gathering and conversations on yesterday. Um, we met with uh, each one of our churches and had um, conversations about who we are, where we're going, and what 2022 is going to look like. Um, the one thing that we, we know in this uh, and what we pray is a post-pandemic era. <laughs> it, it, we pray for the post-pandemic, but we never know. You know, they say that the pandemic is going to be with us always. But we'll, we are learning to, to, to deal with it a little bit better. Um, but church has changed over the last year and a half. Um, church is, 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 is different now and it's going to be different uh, for all those who are enjoying church in their home. That's something they probably wouldn't have done a year and a half ago. But now uh, we are able to do it, do it live. Uh, and so we have to look at. Um, what we do and how we do it in, in the coming year uh, because our goal is still to make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Amen. Um, and you can clap on that. And for each of our, our churches, that is, what, that is what we are trying to do. Um, and, and, and that is what we work toward um, in terms of the various ministries and all the things that we do. Uh, and as, as was mentioned earlier, um, ministry is not free. In order to do ministry, in order to do outreach, in order to touch people in the community, in order to uh, create uh, programs and ministries and services and different things um, that we have to do, um, it, takes, it takes money. Uh, and so one of, the, one of the things that we talked about yesterday was that um, for all of our churches, we need to increase our giving. Uh, because, so, you know, because what happened during the, the pandemic is people didn't know what was going to be happening, so they were holding on to their money. They were squeezing tight. <laughs> they, they were squeezing, they were sque and some people still squeezing tight. Of course, some people were squeezing tight before the pandemic, but that's a whole other thing. Uh, um, <laughs> but, but uh, you, you know, the word re requires us, those who have given their lives to Christ, to pay a tithe, which is a 10%. 10% of what we bring in. And that's 10% of the big number. <laughs> it's 10% of, of the same number that the federal government takes taxes out and, and they hit you about 29%, you know, uh, they hit you for 29%. I, I don't know. I think that um, our God has done more for us than the federal government. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But the last time I checked, the federal government did not wake me up. I, I, mm, he did not cover me. He did not protect me. You know, I guess he did protect me. And I'm going to thank all the veterans, too. Y'all did protect us. Thank you so very much. Can we give our veterans a hand praise? Amen. Thank you so very much. And so the conversation was to it, that, that we really need to increase our giving um, to work on the tithe. Um, the tithe is 10 percent. And so what, what, what I'm asking is, um, and I know a lot of folks are, are if, you, if you're paying your tithes, praise the Lord, God bless you. And if not, if it is your desire to be obedient, then you will look and try to make it to that 10 percent. So wherever you are. And, and, and the 10% math is real easy. You just take off a zero, right? And that's where you go. Uh, is that it? Who's the math teacher? I don't know. Math. math wasn't my thing, but I think that's the way it works. Just take a zero off, cut a zero off, and that's it? Okay, yeah, we have an accountant here in the front row. We're, we're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. Um, and, and if you are, if you look at now and you are at 4%, and then you know, just make a gradual increase each month as, you, as we strive to get to the 10%. And, and, and I know that you know, the, the, the challenging thing about paying tithes is that you, it does not look like you're going to be able to make it. That's right. You know, because most of us are going paycheck to paycheck. You know, and by the <laughs> somebody say amen. Um, 
And, and by the time we get to the end of the week, you know, we are, we, we're, we're, we're wondering if we're going to make it. And so now you're saying, now, Pastor, you want me to give more to the church. But, but in Malachi, it, it says, the Lord said, put me to the test. Check and see if I'll do this. And, and, and all of us, everyone who pays tithe, at some point you had to do that. You had to trust and believe by faith that if what God said is true, if you will do this, he will open up the windows of heaven, the storehouses of his bounty, and pour out onto you more than you can ever receive. But you got to have faith to believe that because it ain't going to look right. It, it, it's not going to look right. You know, I just write the check. Boy, I'm praying every number I write down. Lord, Lord Jesus. Boy, you got to make a way. You got to make a way out of absolutely no way, Lord. But I'm going to trust and believe. And, and God comes through. And, and this is the God who is the, does exceedingly and abundantly more. Right. And so if you're willing to be obedient, he will give you more than you expect. So so as we move into 2022, I, I would like to everybody to really strive to be a tithe payer. Some of y'all, we need to strive just to be a, a giver, period. And I'm serious. I don't want to go there this morning, but um, and, and it's not you are giving to God and not you're not giving to me. Certainly not giving to me. You're not giving to the church. Amen. This, this is, you're giving to God in thanks for what God has done for you. Amen. So if you look at the 10%, which is a dime out of every dollar, if you don't think God is worth that. Hmm. A dime out of every dollar. Woo. Jesus. If you don't think it's worth that, then, you know, that, that is us. But but we are going to strive to do that so that we can do more in our community and we can touch more lives and we can change more lives as we move forward. There will be changes in, in, um, uh, in, in how we worship in 2022. We'll give you more details on that. But I want to thank everybody and the conversations and those who are willing to share uh, and, and voice, voice opinions. It's very important. We are all a part of this. We all are going to be in this together. Um, but uh, God has a plan as well. And God is going to rule, reign, and, and do what... Uh, he has called us to do and, and believe it. God has called us together to do great things in South County. I want you to believe that. And I'm going to give myself a hand pray because y'all ain't clean. Y'all ain't giving me a It's so funny when we talk about the things that we can do and should do. Everything, everybody gets quiet. Everybody gets quiet. But God is able. God is, God is able. God is able. And if, if you trust and believe then we'll be able to do more than we even imagined. But to God be the glory. I hope you enjoy the service. Amen. Uh, and we were going to move on to the service. God bless.
for our blessings. Thanking God for our blessings. It's harvest time. And now we'll have a Veterans Day tribute brought to us by Sister Carmen Patton. Amen. Thank God for your service. Sacrifice. 
sacrificing, sacrificing their lives for our freedom. So we thank you. God bless you. Keep on keeping on. Carmen, that was wonderful. Absolutely. My firstborn son, who's a veteran, was born at Langley Air Force Base in Virginia. My husband was in the Air Force at that time. So God bless you all. Our scripture this morning will be coming from Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, verses 7 through 18, and the New Testament epistle. So Philippians, the third chapter, verses 12 through 14. Sister Pearlene Collins will be reading our Old Testament, and Sister Cheryl Medley Hicks will be reading the New Testament. And would you all stand? The word of God is being read to the people of God. Sister Pearlene, can you read verse 6 too? Just be verse six and eight. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. And congratulations to all the dads. What a job. And Carmen, <laughs> as a woman of the military. Yeah. I feel like we should salute you. <laughs> Did I do that right? <laughs> Close. But no, um, really, it's great to hear about women as well as men. Amen. Amen. I will start the reading at verse 6. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half of its height, for the people worked with all their heart. Mm -hmm. But when the sand valley, the Bayah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the people of Ashdod heard that the repairs to Jerusalem's wall had gone ahead and what the gaps were being, and that the gaps were being closed, they were angry. They plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God and posted a God day and night to meet this threat. Meanwhile, the people in Judah said, the strength of the laborers is giving out and there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. Also, our enemy said, before they know it or see us, we will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to the work. Then the Jews who lived near them came and told us ten times over, wherever you turn, they will attack us. Therefore, I stationed some of the people behind the closest point of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the noble, the officials, and the rest of the people, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome, and fight for your families, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. When our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated them, we all returned to the walls, each to our own work. From that day on, half of my men did the work while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bells, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were building the walls. Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other, and each of the builders wore their sword at their side and as he worked. But the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. I go too far. No, you're good. Continue. They need to hear. Then I said to the noble, the officials, and the rest of the people, the work is extensive and spread out, and where are we widely? And we were widely separated from each other along the wall. 
Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. So we continue the work with half the men holding spirits from the first light of dawn till the stars came out. And at that time, I also said to the people, have every man and his helper stay inside of Jerusalem at night so they can serve us as gods by night and as workers by day. Neither I nor my brethren, nor my men, nor the guard with, with me took off our clothes. Each had his weapon, even when he went for water. This is the word of God. Amen. <laughs> I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do know, forgetting what is behind uh -huh. and straining toward what is ahead, mm -hmm. I press on toward the goal to, prize, to, to find the prize for which God has called me heavenwardly in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And now the hymn of preparation by the TCC Mass Choir, followed by the sermon from our own pastor, Reverend Marvin R. Wumble. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. In 
the army of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Church, say amen one more time. Hallelujah. Can we give our choir a hand, praise? Thank you very much. Our musicians, our percussion section, thank you so very much. I'd like to thank all the ushers, and I'd like to thank uh, Keisha, who is hard at work with 18 computers and, uh, <laughs> and, all in, and 16 phones and that she is working with today to keep us online. Um, thank you. Appreciate you. Um, God is good and worthy to be praised. Amen. Um, I'm going to be um, coming from the book of Nehemiah, as we, just sort of continuing as we, as we see how um, Nehemiah... Um, had to, was building this, this wall. It really wasn't Nehemiah. Nehemiah was the leader. It was the people. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. So the building couldn't take place without the people. That's it. Amen. Amen. Uh, and, and so it was the people who were not builders, who were not construction workers, um, who were not uh, craftsmen, uh, but it was the people who said, this needs to be done, so we're going to step up and do it. Amen. Y'all gonna be quiet this morning. You gonna be quiet. I'm, I, you know we can get, but God, you, you may be quiet at this morning. But anyway, so so um, let me tell you about. So this is a warning uh, for for all of those who are at home. If you're eating this, if you're eating breakfast right now, you might want to stop <laughs> until at least until this opening segment is done. Um, one of my first jobs um, that I had, real job, I was, um, a, I was a paper boy first, but my first real job, I was a courtesy clerk at one of the, um, one of the grocery store chains. And so, you know, a courtesy clerk is basically a bagger. That's it. And so we would, we would work with, with the uh, checkout people and we would, bag, we would bag the groceries, which is why I'm an expert in putting bags together. <laughs> My folks from the pool, food pantry like, no, you ain't there. <laughs> uh, and so, so we, we, we did that, and then we would, we would pack the bags, and many times we would take the bags, and we would take them out to people's cars, and we would put them, uh, put them in, in, the, uh, in their cars. Uh, and so, uh, so one day, um, I was working at the store, and it had to be a Saturday. It was a Saturday night, uh, and things had slowed down a little bit, gone, and the person who was in charge of the shift he and I didn't really see eye to eye all the time. And so at one point, he said, there was the, you know, they, they used to, they would call you on the, on the system and say, we need for you to come into the back to do something for us. I'm like, what? You know? So, so I go into the back, and they said, you need to clean up the bathroom. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, that's, not, that's not my job. I, I, I said what I'm supposed to do. To so, know you have to clean up the bathroom. You're the only one here. You're the courtesy clerk. And so the courtesy, courtesy clerk was the lowest on the ring. So, so I had to go and clean up the bathroom. And so I, um, I, and so I went, I, I opened the door to the men's bathroom. And my knees buckled. <laughs> and I was hit with a smell. That was so repulsive. I, I, I was like, oh, and, and then I looked inside. Whoo! Whoever did that, I, I was like, we need to go on the road and find them because they're somewhere lying on the road. There was excrement. I'm going to give it a good word. We can call it boo boo doo doo, whatever. It had flowed out of the toilet. It was all over the floor. Yeah, don't just stop eating breakfast. It was all over the floor and it was rolling toward the door. It was everywhere. It wasn't a big fat, but I was just like, and, and I looked at it and I said, oh, you got to be kidding. Hey, there ain't. This is not my job. This is not what I do. How? And, and I'm looking like, woo! This, I, mm. this was bad. <laughs> and so I, you know, I, I, I'm like, you have got to be kidding. There's no way 
that you were asking me to do this, but he and I didn't get along. Say, you got to clean it up. So I, I went into the the store and I got mops, I got dust pans, I got buckets, and and and, and I started this work. You know, I ruined a pair of shoes. This, I mean, this was the worst situation I've ever been in. I, I couldn't believe it. it was just the most ridiculous thing I had ever seen in my life. You've got to be kidding. <laughs> that had to be the attitude of the, the, the Israelites as they were preparing, as they were working on the wall of Jerusalem. They were working on this wall that had been burnt and torn down and, and, and the rubble. So they talk about, so, so verse 10, I'm going to focus on verse 10. I'm going to give you a little bit more, but I'm going to focus on verse 10. Of the rubble was was, was so much, and so what the rubble was is that the walls had been pushed over, and and, and so so understand that the walls they, they, they just stacked large rocks and large boulders together. They didn't have concrete or anything like that. It was all that, and so all of that had just been had fallen over and was sitting at the base of what could have should have been the wall. And this rubble, all of these rocks, had been there for more than a hundred years. There was dirt, there was thickets, there was, ad, there was snakes, there was all kinds of stuff at, at, on this wall. And the problem was, at most points of the, of the, at the wall, they could not build because of the rubble. And the rubble had to be removed so that you could get to the foundation and begin to build. So you could not build until you cleared the rubble. Come on. Hmm. So we're going to talk a little bit about lives and the rubble in the church. I'm going to title this this morning, You've Got to Be Kidding. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, we just ask in the name of Jesus that you speak to us. Lord, I am a vessel. Pour into me that I might pour into your people the word that you know that they need to hear. And we will give you the glory. And it is in the awesome name of Jesus, Lord God, that we listen to you and say amen. amen. So we join our text this morning. Thanks for our, for our reader this morning, our readers this morning. Uh, and when we look at, at verse 6, we find that the wall had been built to half of its height. So the wall is a 40 foot high wall. So they had built it uh, to about 20 feet, which is about two stories uh, in, in a building. And, and, and they said that they were able to build this because the people had worked with all their heart. So this gives us insight. Of and lazy because they had allowed the dysfunction in the walls to be down for over a hundred years. They, they didn't do much. And, and once, once Nehemiah came and they committed to build the wall and, 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 and they were willing to do the wall because nothing gets done if you are unwilling to do the work. See, we can talk about the work. We can talk about the things we want to do. We can talk about the things that we should do. But unless you are willing to do the work, unless you're willing to show nothing gets done, there are a lot of plans that are on paper. There are a lot of things that we can look at and say, ooh, this is great. We can do this. We can do this. But unless we show up to do the work and have the ability and, and willfulness to work with all of our hearts, nothing will get done. In our church-wide meeting yesterday, I handed out a list of possible ministries that can be taken on by the churches of the Tri-City Charge. These are ministries that can certainly be done. In fact, I was told that most of these ministries had been done in the past. But I did not sense an excitement or a willingness to participate. Yeah, see, nothing can happen if we don't commit to do the work. And ministry is not easy. If you want to do something easy, it is not working in the church or working with church people. Help me, Jesus. We talk about we want to be in the community. We rave about the lives that we want to engage and impact and transform. But unless we commit to work with all our hearts, 
Nothing is going to happen. Ministry does not happen when we are comfortable. Ministry does not happen when we're sitting on our tailbones. It takes time. It takes dedication. It takes sacrifice. And it takes a kind of commitment that takes its toll on us. You see, the Israelites decided to do something different and actually work on the wall. And the enemies got mad. And so we, we see here um, the list of enemies. Now, when we first started this thing, the only enemy who was around was, was uh, Sanballat and Tobiah. And Sanballat was, was may sin give him life. That was his name. Sanballat is the enemy. Sanballat it would be representative of Satan in our lives. And Sanballat is the one who was trying to stop the work. But as they continued to do the work and they went halfway, you will see that more than Sanballat showed up. The Bible says that Sanballat, watch this, Sanballat who, who was with the Samaritans who were north of Jerusalem, Tobiah was the Amorites who was east of Jerusalem, Geshem was the Arab who was south of Jerusalem, and the Ashdodites were from Philistine which was west of Jerusalem. In other words, they came from all around Jerusalem. So you need to understand when we try to do God's word, the enemy is not coming from one place. The enemy is coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west because the enemy does not want us to do what God has called us to do. The enemy does not want us to use our gifts. The enemy does not want us to use our anointing. The enemy is trying to stop everything that we want to do, that we should do, all the help, all the impact, all the transformation. The enemy wants to stop us. And the enemy always comes back with more folks to try to stop us. But if you remember, the people were covered by the king. And so all they could do was try to intimidate the people. Try to scare the people. Give the people doubt and fear and confusion. And that is what the enemy does. He comes in and he's talking trash and he's trying to make sure that you have fear and you believe the lies and the doubt and the confusion. But you see, I came by this morning to let you know, do not be discouraged because God is on our side. The Jews were surrounded by their enemies who wanted to keep them weak and dis depressed and disgraced. They plotted to attack the people, saying they were going to kill the people. But Nehemiah says in verse 9, but we pray. Oh, turn to your neighbors and neighbor. Prayer changes things. Oh, if you don't believe. Oh. Prayer changes things. Prayer makes a difference. Yes. See, you've got to pray and have faith and believe that your God will protect you from all of the plans of the enemy. That's what you have to know. No matter what's coming at you, no matter where you are in the midst of the process, the enemy is coming for you. The enemy wants to isolate you and get you by yourself so the enemy can talk trash and threaten you and get you to believe that God is not able, that God is not there. But I believe that it is our God that said, I will always be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So whatever you're going through, no matter how bad you might think it is, God is right there with you and the devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Now let me deal with verse 10 because I want to focus there because this happens quickly to God's children when they are doing the work of the kingdom. I believe what we see here is a precursor to what God is calling us to do in the tri-city charge. In verse 10, we see a change in the people of Judah. You see, before they were anxious, let's build the wall, let's do that. But then once they had to start doing the work. And the Bible says, as we read, it said that, that from, from the first of the dawn until, until the stars came out, they were working. So they were putting in long hours in building this wall. Amen. And the Bible says in verse 10, the strength of the labor, laborers are giving out. The people were getting tired. To think about their situation. They have been working for almost a month from sun up to sundown on work that was not easy. They were cleaning and lifting and moving heavy rocks and boulders caked with dirt and mess and stuff that has been around. Oh, come on now. Watch this. Stuff that has been around for a whole for a hundred years. So here's what you need to know about rubble. Rubble is stuff from the past. Come on. Say it. Y'all hold on to that. Rubble is stuff from the past. Rubble is stuff that has fallen apart in the past that is preventing you from building in the future. Oh, shoot. Mm, 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 mm. You see, and what complicated the matters is that the people who were doing this had never done this before. 
They were like me in that bathroom. I ain't never done nothing like that before. They had never, they had never done this before. Uh, they had never lifted rocks. They were not skilled craftsmen. They, they, this is not what they did. You know, they had perfume makers and goldsmiths, and and just and and all these people were farmers. Amen. They were, they were, they were, they were. They had, they had cattle, and and so, so to build a wall to do what they were asked to do was something that they had to do that they had never done before. So don't be surprised. Come on, I need somebody to grasp this. Don't be surprised when God asks you to do something that you've never done before. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but don't be surprised and, and you wonder why me Lord because he is calling on you because he's been preparing you he's been getting you ready he's been getting you skilled you thought that job that you had was getting you ready to do good on your job but it was really getting you ready to do good for the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus oh amen clock in the name of Jesus I want somebody in here to know and understand God has been getting you ready for the work of the church and he's going to give you something that you may not even know that you think that you can do that you know you cannot do but God, because he, woo, God rarely asks us to do something that's real easy. And when we do this work, and they had done this work, they do this work, they were tired. And as we do the work of God, we get tired. But the Bible says in Matthew 11 and 28, Jesus said, come to me. Mm. Come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest in your souls for my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. And so as we, as we struggle to do the things God has called, he is saying, I know you're tired. I know you're weary. I know that you, you don't feel that you can do it. But if you come to me, I will give you rest. If you come to me, I will refresh your soul. If you come to me, I'll give you more strength than you ever had. If you come to me and believe I can do it, if you come to me, hallelujah, I'm going to make it all right. If you come to me. You're going to be able to do exceedingly and abundantly more. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. If you come to me, I'll set you free. Hmm. Come to me because because how you are trying to work with your own power and own strength is not working. That's why you're so tired. That's right. Huh? That's right. Yeah. He said, come, come to me. I, I'm going to refresh you. Yes. And, and the refreshing of the Lord is, is all over the Bible in Acts 3 and 19. He says, times of refreshing come from the Lord. In Jeremiah 31 and 25, for I have given rest to the weary and joy for those who are sorrowful. God, God is in the business of refreshing us because he knows the work is not easy. He knows that we're wearing it down because we're, we're trying to do God's work. We're trying to do his. We're trying to do our work. We're trying to do all of these things. We're trying to do so much. Come to me. Come to me. See, see, just, just mm, have a little talk with Jesus. Mm. He will renew and refresh. Just, 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 just come. To me, and I can change everything. Those who follow Christ will find refreshment in their renewed relationship with Him, freedom from guilt over sin, deliverance from fear and despair, and the promise of continued help and guidance from the Holy Spirit. Come to me. Ooh, I got an echo. <laughs> And, and, and so, so as we begin to do the work, as we begin to, to, to go out and do things, we're going to be tired and, and we're just going to have to take a little bit of time and just come to Jesus. Amen. Spend a little time in prayer. Amen. Lord God, just refresh me, renew me. You are my strength, you are my song, and you are my salvation. Yes. In the name of Jesus. See, we've been looking elsewhere. We've been tired with all these things. Jesus says, come to me. So now I, I, I want to deal with the other thing that was going on in verse 10. It said they were, they were tired. Yeah. And it says there is so much rubble 
that we cannot rebuild the wall. Come on. I talked a little bit about rubble last week, but I want to, Lord gave me a new perspective that, that we know that rubble was the stones, the large and the st small stones that were from the wall of Jerusalem that had been burnt and pushed over and all the heap and all, the, it was a mess. Mm. And, and, and watch this, you see, uh, rubble is the messy blockade from the past. The people who were being asked to clean this stuff up had nothing to do with the rubble that was there. Somebody coming with me this morning. Because, because, because you understand that, 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 that so many times in order to do what we have to do, we have to get rid of the rubble that, that, that we, were, we may not have been a part of it all. And in fact, the people who were doing this, they weren't even born. It's, these had, the walls have been down more than a hundred years. They weren't born. So many of them were still living in Babylon, but they were asked to clean up the rubble so that you had to get this stuff out the way so that we could do what God has called us to do. We have to get to the foundation. And so all the stuff, all the rubble, all the things that are in the way, all of the mess of our past has to be removed. Huh. Let's talk about the rubble of our lives. This is stuff that, that had to, we had to stop doing and stop thinking about. For us, the rubble uh, were, are the people, some of the rubble were the people we were hanging out with. For some of us, the rubble would, came in a bottle or came in a pipe. Some of us, the rubble were the things that we allowed our eyes to see that we shouldn't have been looking at. Sometimes the rubble was the trash that prevents us from growing and doing what God wants us to do. Some of us have more rubble than others. But all of us had, had rubble in our life because we were all born in sin. And, and, and see, I want you to understand this. The confusion is that the Bible says that uh, when you give your life to Christ, the whole I am a new creature. Old things have passed away. Old things have passed away, but you're still surrounded by rubble. Right. Come on, Pastor. And, and if you don't deal with the rubble, the rubble will jump up and fight. You ain't no telling what might be in the rubble. Amen. And, and so we have, to, we have to deal with the rubble that is put before us. We are claims. Clean. I mean, even, even Paul had to deal with this rubble, and he talked about it in Romans 17, uh, beginning in verse 14. He says, so the trouble is not with the law, for, it, for it's spiritual and good. The trouble is with me. Yes. For I am all too human, a slave to sin. I, I don't really understand myself, or I, I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But if I know that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree with the law that is good. So I am not the only one doing wrong. It is the sin living in me that does it. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I, I want to do what's right, but I can't. I, I want to do what's good, but I don't. I, I want to do what it, I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I want to do, I am not really the one doing it. It is the sin that lives in me. Sin is the rubble that is around all of our lives. It, it, is, it is always there. Even when we give our lives to Christ, we talk about the easily entangled sins, those sins that know us so very well, the sins that are always close to us, those sins that walk right beside us, waiting for us to slip, waiting for us to give them an open door. Those sins are always right there. You know that sin. It knows you very well. It recognizes you. It's been with you for a very, very long time. Your, your easily entangled sin, your rubble, is comfortable with you. Yes. Come on, Pastor. See, this, 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 this rubble stays with you. And, 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 and a lot of the problems that we have, is, is we are fighting to do the will of God. And it's, it is more difficult because we are trying to, to build on rubble. And you cannot. You have to get the rubble out the way. We are in constant battle with our sinful nature. The rubble of our lives that, that we have to deal with in prayer. We all know our rubble. And unless we allow God to deal with it. And ask like David did, creating me a clean heart and a step growing us. The things that we need to do cannot be done. We must deal with our rubble. And sometimes our rubble are so, is, is, are so ugly. If you really looked at it, you will look at it and say, you've got to be kidding. Come on, Pastor. I have so much work to do, but I, I, I've got to ask the Lord to help me deal with this thing because I need to be able to build. Now let me talk about the rubble of the church. Yes, come on, before I finish this sermon, you see, we uh, established that, that a building cannot take place if rubble is still there. Yes. Remember that the rubble that we are dealing with is not necessarily our own. For some of us, it is our parents and our grandparents' rubble. Come on. Yes. 
Preach. You see, a lot of times our rubble are, are the generational curses that have been handed down from generation to generation that have not been dealt with, that have been swept under the rug, that have been ignored. Amen. And we cannot be who we are called to be unless we deal with that thing. That's right. That's right. Huh. You see, in the church, the rubble of the old ways and the ancient ideologies that have not worked in the past, but but no longer are working. They had worked in the past, but are no longer working today. The rubble in the church are the old conflicts that happened so many years ago that are preventing us from moving forward for what God wants us to do today. Oh, I'm going to talk to somebody. The, 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 the rubble in the church are the rumors and the lies and the innuendos that are spread to demean those who are trying to do God's work. The rubble is the power-seeking people who are standing in the way, not allowing those who want to work on the wall to work on the wall. Because you keep talking about it, and you keep lying about them, and you keep whispering about them, and they don't feel comfortable, they feel terrible, and they will not come back to the church, they will not come into the church, because when they look at the rubble of the church, they say, you have got to be kidding. Brother is telling people that we've never done it that way before, so it probably won't work, yet God is the one who's telling us to do it. Rubble is acting ugly toward one another and discouraging one another who want to work. Rubble are the blockades that are placed in your way when you are trying to do God's will and you are getting tired. Rubble is living in the past when, when a fresh approach is needed and God is willing to give it to you. It is the rubble of the churches that cause pastors who are trying to move forward to say, you've got to be kidding. Come on. Yeah. Because they know that they cannot build, and we cannot grow, and do what the kingdom of God would have us to do unless the rubble is dealt with. Yes. See, one of our problems is that we seem to, to carry on as if everything is good. We try to ignore the rubble. There's no workaround for the rubble. Come on. You got to deal with it, face it, ask God to eliminate it, and then give God glory when he does. But we all have to deal with the rubble. You see, they were able to build half the wall because they started to complain about the rubble. So, so the enemy will allow you to do so much because the enemy is waiting for you to quit. When you start getting close, see, when you do have of it, you have confidence, you start getting close, things look good. But it is when you have to deal with the rubble. See, you, you have to deal with the rubble. So what is the rubble solution? We need to follow uh, Nehemiah's lead. He cried out to God for direction and strength. He cried out to God to help him build and restore. He called on God for a refreshing spirit to take hold of the people, to take hold of the work so that they could build God. They called out to God. They did like Jesus who said, come to me. See, we can remove the rubble and begin building when we start praying for one another and stop talking about one another. Come on. See, the rubble will begin to dissipate, you know, and, and this is, so we're talking about inside the church. And when you read the scripture, you need to understand. He said, if my people, Come on. who were called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then. So, so, so there's a responsibility for the children of God, a responsibility for him. He said, if my people, yeah. I, 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 I know we, we, we cannot expect the world to do these things if my people, if the people who say that they are children of the most high God, if my people, of the people who are blessed and highly favored in the Lord, if my people, the people who call on me night after night and the night, if my people who are called by my people to humble themselves and pray. If you asking for it, we must not be doing it. And turn from a wicked way to, and turn because what you're doing is not what God has called you to do. 
Lord God, if you help me to turn, then I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive your sin. And I will heal their land. My people. Oh, or maybe, maybe to, to help us with the rubble that is in our lives and in our church, we need to take the attitude of David in Psalms 51. Yes. After Nathan had revealed what he had done, he right. said, have mercy on me, O oh God. He said, look at here, Lord, block out my transgressions. Yes. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sins are always before me. And so what he's saying is, Lord God, I, I know I got so much rubble sitting up in here. I got so much that has to be dealt with. But Lord God, I am calling on you to help me, to set me free. Blot it out. Make it plain. I forgive me against you and you alone. I have sinned and done this evil in your sight that, that you may may be found just when you speak and blameless. And then he said, purge me with hyssop and, and I Hear me. Make me hear the joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide my face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit in me. In order to remove the rubble, rubble in order to do what we have to do. See, because I, I don't want us to get confused when we are able to do great things. It means that we're only halfway. Come on. And it's at the halfway point that the rubble be, seems overwhelming. Yes. At the halfway point is when everybody, because we know we've seen it. Yeah. We work and we work and we work and we work. We have all these folks here and everybody shows up. And then once the work starts getting a little tough, once we start doing it for a little while, only half the people show up. Come on. Huh? What, what happened to all the volunteers? Where everybody go? Amen. Amen. Where everybody go? <laughs> and so that's when it gets tough. And, and, and that is when, you know, and, as we begin to form ministries and, and we do more things, uh, you know, every ministry, y'all need to have at least a prayer warrior up in there. Yep. Yeah. And, and watch this. The prayer, the, 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 the prayer warrior will probably be somebody who may not come and actually do the work, but their work is to pray. Their work is to ask for the covering of the Lord to be about it. Their work is the Lord God. You have to remove the rubble so that the people can do what they need to do. Their work is to call on the name of Jesus on the behalf of that particular ministry. And so as you are building your ministries, you know that you can find somebody. If somebody don't show up and you know they can pray, you call them up and say, I just need for you to be a prayer warrior. I, we don't need for you to show up. We just need for you to be on your knees. We need for you to, to lift up our, our name. We need for you to do the right thing and help us so that we can do what God has called us to do. We have to get to a situation that the rubble is, is moved out of our way so that we can find our foundation because Jesus Christ is that foundation. And as long as the rubble's there, we can't even see Jesus. Come on. Woo. Jesus is our rock. Jesus is our foundation. And the stuff of the past has covered up all of that. And until we deal with that, because what, what they tried was build on top of the rubble mm -hmm. and the wall just fell down because you weren't on the right foundation. We have to deal with it. We have to work on it. We have to pray about it. And we cannot pretend it's not there. Amen? Amen. So I know you want to get the, this is, this is my Dwayne part of the sermon. Because <laughs> I got to finish what happened to me in that bathroom. That was a rough night right there. And so, whew, man, just the memory of it. Whew. And so, you know, I was using stuff, I was sweeping up, I was putting stuff, and I put all the, the excrement into boxes, right? And then I took the boxes and put the boxes in the store's trasher smasher. They had one of those big 
uh, things that, that, that crushed the trash. It was huge. It was absolutely huge. And so I, I took all, I, it was like five or six boxes, you know, and, and I had to clean all this stuff up. I got Lysol and spread it all on the floor and I cleaned it up so the bathroom was cool. And, and I put it in into the trash dispatcher, put more boxes on top of it and hit smash. By the way, there's more. So like I said, this was a Saturday night, right? So I didn't work on Sunday because my father wouldn't allow me to work on Sunday. Tuesday, um, Monday was my off day, so I got there on Tuesday. I go back to work, right? And 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 they started. They were talking about how on that Sunday morning they couldn't open the store because it was stinking so bad, and they couldn't find out where the stink was. They were going. To, they thought that some meat had gone bad. They were looking for meat. They were looking for everything. And, and this stuff, and it, it was so bad. They, had, they opened all the doors. They couldn't let, nobody wanted to come into the store because this was stinking and smelling so bad. And the supervisor that made me do it, he got suspended for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Touch not my anointed eye. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. And they were telling me the story. I was trying to sit up with the straightest face that I could because I knew exactly what had happened, boy. <laughs> it took them about two days to figure it out that they had to get the, all, take all the garbage out of the trash dispatcher and get it outside. I mean, woo wee! <laughs> but that's what happens when you ask people to do work that they're not supposed to do. But if God is on our side, God is going to give us what we need to do in order to accomplish the goals of our church. Amen. Amen. So God is great and worthy to be praised. Stand up on you and give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Stand up, give the Lord a hand praise. As we move forward, we just cannot be afraid to deal with with the rubble that is before us. We're going to call it out. We're going to ask the Lord God to remove it for us so that we can build the wall and do the things that God has called us to do. Let's yes. pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done. And we thank you, Lord God, as we have already began the work to build what you have called us to build. And now, Lord God, as we get to the places where the rubble is in the way, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would remove it. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would give us the strength and the attitude. Because sometimes we say, well, it's not about me, but it's about you can't do what God has called you to do unless you remove that that is in front of you. So help us, Lord God. So that we can be rubble free. And, and once we get to the foundation, which is Jesus Christ, then we can begin to build. Knowing that God is with us. And God will be with us through the entire mission. So Lord God, on this day, we give you glory, honor, and praise. And look forward to twisting the script. That we will take the ministries of our churches. And begin to touch and change lives. And when it is seen what we are able to do, then someone will say, oh, you've got to be kidding. That those churches down there in South County, those little bitty churches with all the black folks in it, do you see what they've done? Do you see the lives they've changed, the lives they've touched, the lives they've transformed, the disciples that you have made? I didn't think they could do it all. Oh, you've got to be kidding. Amen. And then they will discover we can do it. all things are possible, possible. Yeah. through our Christ who gives us strength. And then they'll understand that, that there are no limitations when God is on our side. So we thank you in advance, Lord God, for giving us the strength that, that when we were tired, we will, we will come to you that we might find the rest that we need. And you said the thing that 
wait on the Lord shall have their strength renewed. So Lord God, as we are leaning on you and relying on you and coming to you and being renewed, Lord God, that we can go out and be ready to remove the rubble and build on the foundation which is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we thank you in advance for the great things that are on the way. We thank you in advance, Lord God, for allowing us to face our rubble and move forward in glory. This is our prayer, and we give you glory. In the awesome name of Jesus, we pray and say amen, 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 amen. and amen. Is it the Lord that prayer this morning? Ancestors 
who paved the way for this generation of churches in our community. So I've written a grant from Maryland Historical Trust. That grant was approved for $18,000. <laughs> comes from our census, our documents, our, our, our government agency. This is our money. But this cemetery holds the remains of a revolutionary war hero by the name of Primos Thompson, who was a drummer and a skirmish in the War of 1812 that was in Tracy's Landing. And what I'd like to say to all the veterans and everybody here that served, that has served in the in all foreign wars and local wars, thank you. Because there's funding for our churches, our communities and everything. And like I said, I'm on the Maryland Historical Trust list of properties. So I wish every church in our community, our African American organizations as well, apply for some of these grants for funding for our churches and our communities and the work that we're doing in South County and beyond. Thank you. We thank you, Eleanor, for leading the work at Tan Yard. For years and years, we've been talking about cleaning up that cemetery and getting it in shape. And uh, through your hard work and volunteers and folks that have come along, we we thank you that. We have some funding now to continue that work. Some fencing, is that correct? Fencing, signage, uh, uh, monuments for the veterans of all foreign wars, and another hopefully $50,000 be coming soon. So we, we are grateful. We are thankful <laughs> that we will no longer get calls and letters from the community of Deal who say, you need to clean up the cemetery. What can we do? And some of them have come along and stood with us and helped us to clean it. So we are grateful. Um, I don't know about you. I'm sure most of us have folks who are interred in that cemetery. So we thank you for your work. Um, Sir. Um, um, I appreciate what uh, Eleanor. Eleanor is doing, but um, I would like to know when this project is going to start because I sure would like to uh, be a volunteer to help with it. So when it started or whenever you're going to get to working, I would love to know myself that I really, really want to honor our ancestor who's gone on. Sure. And at the church, I have to meet some uh, archaeologists, and you can come on down and see how the cemetery looks. You can drive down there. Church, say amen. amen. God is moving. Yes. Amen. Yes. God is moving. Amen. Um, and our God is more than able. So one of the things we want to do, y'all have a basket back there. Um, every, every quarter, um, our percussionists come with us everywhere we go, and they are not paid staff on, on most of the churches. And so what we want to do is we want to bless them for blessing us. Amen? Amen. 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 So on your way out, the ushers will have a basket and that you can just... You can bless our, there it is right there, but the Kenny has the basket. We can, we can bless our percussionists uh, who put in a lot of work. And y'all don't, y'all aren't here early to see all they bring in here. <laughs> Are you sorry about that? <laughs> they bring in like 25 uh, bags <laughs> of equipment and everything. And it takes a lot to set up and get ready to do everything that they do. Uh, and so it's truly a blessing that they are with us and, and continue to be with us. So if we could, if we could bless them, amen, on, on, the, on our way out, um, it, it would be a blessing to it. Just to encourage them, amen, uh, to keep on keeping on. 
Uh, let's stand up as we prepare to leave this place. Again, for everyone who's come, to God be the glory. Thank you for being a part of our service. For all of those who are online with us, thank you for being a part of our service. Um, we have an offering here, but um, if you will go to either one, any of our websites, if you would like to give, if you would like to, to help us as we prepare to do the ministries um, uh, for our community and for our church, uh, there are various ways that you can go and, and you will be able to see that you can use your credit card or go, go to PayPal uh, and just donate to the church who, who are really trying to make a difference in the lives of those in our church and our community. Amen. Amen. I pray that out of our glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide, how long and how deep and how high is the love of Christ. And to know that this love surpasses all knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And now to him who is able. Is there more than a witness? One witness in this house that God is able. Amen. He's more than able. And, and, and I, I want you to, to be encouraged that he is attentive to the prayers of the righteous. Amen. And if the prayer hasn't been answered, just put a yet behind that. Your prayer has not been answered yet. But, but God is faithful. And God is with us. And God is on our side. He is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask, think, or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ through all generations forever and ever. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has Give a pound to just three or four people and just say God is able. Three or four people, God is able.